Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video we will be reviewing the open builds lead 1515 I recently purchased. We will be going over the assembly and some of the issues, the black box motion control system, some of its limitations, as well as upgrades and what free software I recommend for your CAD and CAM operation. So let's get into it. I purchased the 1515 machine kit in industrial black. I added four high torque NEMA 23 stepper motors, the black box motion control system, power supply. I went with none of their router options or their dust shoes. I plan to use this machine as a plasma table, so some of these accessories, including the X, Y, and Z Probe Plus, just were not needed for my project. At the time of the purchase, the interface CNC Touch was not available. I have since pre-ordered it and we'll do a review of that once it arrives. I did not purchase any of their additional software. I will leave links in the description below to all of the websites I reference and any CAD and CAM software required for this project. After placing my order, this arrived at my door two weeks later. I quickly cleared off my kitchen table and got started with the assembly. They provided me a installation video link via email and it is also available from Open Build's website. The video, for the most part, was really well done and covered every step of the assembly. The wiring was in a separate video and equally well done. I would have preferred a printed copy to follow along instead of constantly pausing and rewinding. The build took me about 10 hours. My favorite part of the build was the wiring. All of the wires came stripped and the ends tinned, and no electrical wiring experience was necessary. The machine kit comes with all cables and even includes wire ties. Everything seemed to be complete in my kit. In the end, I found I was missing one precision spacer. Other things to note, I'm not a fan of the cast corner brackets they use in most locations. The cast corners have nubs, and when installed against the V-channel on the opposite plane, they do not lock in and causes them to be held off. This didn't seem to be a big deal in my case, but I ordered a bunch of their more expensive corner brackets and plan to replace all of the cast brackets in the future. One of the bigger problems I found in my kit the gantry risers didn't match, and one was about 1 16th inch longer than the other. The tools required for assembly are a drill with Phillips head bit, a small flathead screwdriver for wiring, and a decent square. A really nice touch to their kit was including their ball screw Allen key screwdriver set. During my build, I was using a cheap plastic square, but knew I was going to move the machine from my kitchen to my shop, so I wasn't too concerned. I highly recommend you go over all pieces in your kit. As I mentioned earlier, my gantry risers were about four business cards thickness difference in height. I was able to correct this by stacking business cards when I was locking in the gantry plate. Finding this problem now saved me a lot of time towards the end of this build squaring everything. It is definitely worth it to spend a little extra time when unboxing to make sure everything is correct. On their website under specifications, they advertise 46 inches on the x-axis and 49 inches on the y-axis. I was able to get 47 inches on the x-axis by installing the bolts towards the outside. This bought me the thickness of the nut and the additional bolt threads sticking out. With them on the outside, I can move an additional half inch on either side of the x-axis. This does cost you one angle bracket on either side of the gantry. Once the assembly was complete, I went through the calibration process, which was pretty straightforward and didn't require any special skills. I purchased a Makita router, which is smaller in diameter than the DeWalt that this machine comes set up for, so I 3D printed a spacer. Once that was complete, I was able to successfully route a Hello World that they provide the CAD and CAM. The next steps were a little more difficult for me, I don't have a ton of computer experience and had to download the Gerbil post processor and upload it into Fusion 360. I'll leave a link to a YouTube video I found helpful for this. Once completed, I was able to successfully export the G code to the Open Builds machine control and successfully run one of my own designs. 
Now that I've gotten this far, it was time to move the machine to my shop and clean every horizontal surface in my kitchen. I'll leave a link below for a good divorce lawyer for anyone else who is silly enough to assemble this in their kitchen. On a side note, I also set up the Do It 3 6HC. If this is something you're interested in, please comment below and I can do a future video on how to set up for milling operations. I'm still working on getting the CNC plasma to work on the Do It Rip Wrap platform. The main issue I'm having is getting the post processor to work correctly in Fusion 360. Now I have the machine set up in my shop on a 4x8 steel table. I had to cut the legs to lower the height and added some steel to accommodate the drag chain on the Y axis. I also welded 3-8 nuts to each of the corners to dial in the machine once I have the water table completed. Here are some photos of the design I created in sheet metal on Fusion 360. Please subscribe for future videos and comment with any questions regarding this build. Thank you for joining us at Work and Play USA.